Last year's brutal gang rape of a Richmond High School student outside of a homecoming dance shocked the nation. A bill approved by the California Senate would require witnesses of violent crimes against youth under the age of 18 to report it to authorities. Here to talk about the details of the witness responsibility bill is its author, State Senator Leland Yee. Welcome, first of all, to the program. Explain to us, uh, Senator, what is the witness bill, the witness bill? Well, what this bill would do is to uh, require that um, uh, any individual who witness uh, the attack on an individual under 18 would need to then report. Currently, state law requires the reporting of a victim that's 14 and under. But uh, when you think about it, uh, uh, individuals under 18 are still considered minors. And I think that our society, this state, all of us feel an obligation, a special obligation to our children. And that's what this bill will do. How did you get involved into this? Well, not... as, as a father of four, um, as a child psychologist, you know, I, I've really focused my public life towards uh, improving the life of our children. And so when I saw and heard uh, this horrific situation where a young girl was assaulted, raped, and no one did anything, uh, my heart just went out to her. My heart went out to the community. And so the community and I had a number of dialogues about that. And one of the things we came up with was, why don't we find a way to protect those children? And so that's what uh, this bill does. And uh, that's how it came about. And what would be the penalties involved if one was found guilty of not reporting it? Well, it's, you know, it's considered misdemeanor. Uh, so because of that, uh, there are certain consequences befallen an individual uh, who um, basically commits that uh, particular offense. Uh, but we're really more trying to get the word out that all of us have a responsibility to our children. Uh, we uh, are, in fact, uh, uh, in a society that looks after our children, and that's the kind of message that we want to get out, that if, in fact, you witness a crime, an assault against a child, you ought to be participating and helping that particular child. And one of the things you can do is to report that crime. Is there a possibility, though, that this is the kind of bill that could end up hurting the people you're trying to help well, because of the danger of reporting crimes in certain high crime areas? Absolutely. And, 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 and within the bill, we have made provisions for that. Uh, if, in fact, you feel that uh, there is going to be retaliatory actions against you, then there is no requirement of uh, reporting. So there are exemptions, uh, but uh, at, you know, on the balance, uh, what we're trying to do is really to protect our children. And what kind of protection could you provide? I mean, many of these people live in communities that are pretty close-knit, and folks know who may have committed a crime, but they also know who's reported a crime. Well, as you know, as I indicated earlier, um, there are certain provisions, as mm -hmm. I said, retaliatory activities, uh, if you have family member, domestic partners. So, so there are exemptions, there are carve-outs uh, so that uh, we do not put anyone in harm's way. Uh, so what we're trying to do is to say to uh, our society that if you, in fact, witness these kinds of horrific things against kids, that you have a responsibility to report to protect that particular child by getting the authorities to really take care of this uh, particular issue, and hopefully those individuals who committed that act will be brought to justice. Who supports and who opposes? Well, uh, the, the, the only opposition, really, uh, are the uh, uh, the DAs, uh, you know, ACLU is also opposed because they do believe that uh, one ought not to criminalize any individual uh, because they don't report. Uh, being a good Samaritan is something that's voluntary, should not be mandated. Uh, the DAs are concerned that uh, if, in fact, you have a witness and they don't come forward and then you charge them, that you will taint that particular witness. But in general, uh, the community out in Richmond supports that. Uh, the public defenders are neutral on this particular bill. So this is really about really trying to protect our children. That's what we're trying to has do. Has a bill like this been enacted anywhere else, and how is it working, if so? Uh, well, it, it, it's been in a number of other states. It has not been as broad as ours. Uh, um, as I indicated, uh, we've had this bill for since 201, limited up to uh, 14. Now we're extending that up to 18. In our last few minutes, you were very active, too, in working on uh, some sort of, a, a, well, legislation or persuasive power to get the University of California at Stanislaus to reveal uh, papers about the fees being 
proposed to be paid to Sarah Palin for their program there at their school. Uh, today there was some news on that. Are you pleased with it? Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, finally uh, the Stanislaus campus at CSU uh, is recognizing that they do have to follow a California state law, and that's the California Public Records Act. All public institutions in the state of California has to follow that. They're finally now saying that they've got about eight to 900 uh, documents uh, after they initially said that they didn't have any document. So better late than never, but uh, we're going to look and uh, see what those documents uh, uh, contain. Okay, thank you very much for bringing the news about the it's legislation you, you proposed. Thank you. Yes.